Hey guys, welcome back to another Toka Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the 2021 remake of Shaman King. It's 4 o'clock here at the Cobra High home, so let's just jump right into it. For those of you new to the segment, pre sesh is where we talk about some of the things you might like about a series and some of the things that you might not like. The Shaman King series is an anime about, as you may have guessed, shamans who fight to become the king. Don't you know? I know, super, super hard to follow. Let's start off today's discussion with one of the better things that the new series has done, which is updating the pacing. And how they accomplished this was by making sure that the fight scenes remained the same length while cutting out all of the meaty bits that you really didn't need, like people talking on the sidelines and things like that. Not to say that they're not there, this is still, uh, you know, an anime, but it is much less so present, so you're gonna be getting a lot more action scenes this time around. As well as the plot being a lot more fast paced, so you end up getting a lot more story in a much shorter time. Uh, which is nice. There also seems to be a nice balance of both story and conflict this time around, so you're not getting too bogged down by one rather than the other. Fight scenes also usually only take one episode, uh, unlike a lot of other animes where you have to go through like three episodes in order to get through one fight scene, which is definitely a huge plus in my mind. Next up you have Yo Asakura, and here on Cobra High we couldn't possibly be doing the character justice without talking about the elephant in the room. So Yo Asakura is one of the few anime characters that gets very commonly depicted at least amongst uh, the fan base as a stoner character. Now, there's a couple of things that might make you think that, but just to be clear, that's probably not the case. A lot of people point out the fact that his bed sheets and his shirt has a pot leaf on them, but in reality those are just Japanese maple leaves, super, super common in Japan. Uh, so that that's probably... A made-up reference. One of the things that a lot of people will point to though is that Yo Asakura's favorite artist in the series is named Bob Soul Bob and like th there's some pretty heavy comparisons or parallels that could be made to this character, his appearance, uh, his music career even, to the actual real-life celebrity Bob Marley. His personality in general is also so laid back that it gives you that general like stoner vibe of being super super chill, going with the flow, uh, not getting particularly upset about things even in disastrous situations. The third thing people will point to is that if Yo was meant to be a stoner character, uh, you're probably not getting to see that very much in Japan anyway, just because of the fact that uh, they're, they're not, not big on the old green stuff uh, in the East. Unfortunately, hopefully one day that changes, but uh, as it is right now, censorship laws in Japan just make it next to impossible to, to just flat out depict something like that. Even beyond if he were a stoner though, I still think that Yo Asakura is an amazing character. Uh, he kind of falls in line with the MC from last week's pre-sesh, Sawara Sunayoshi. Check that out. Because he's a character that represents kindness, who would rather understand his enemy than just combat with them. That, that definitely uh, plays to one of my preferences for characters, rather than your more stereotypically battle-crazed kind of uh, protagonist. Then we have to talk about Wooden Sword Ryu, or Bokuto Ryu, if uh, you're more into the Japanese than the English. Uh, I think I said that right anyway. Who, who knows? I'm not Japanese. Anyway, so we're talking about uh, the guy who looks and sounds an awful lot like Elvis in the dub. Amazing. Amazing character. 10 out of 10 would recommend. His hairstyle alone has its own story arc for this whole series, and it's just, it's fantastic. What they did with Ryu this time around, man. Ah, can't, can't recommend it enough. So good. So good. Everything about it. <laughs> then I'd like to talk about the show's kind of showcase of philosophy around the idea of morality. Basically, they take a very subjectivist kind of approach, but it's not to say that obviously they're, they're not saying that there are morals that you should adhere to or whatever. But they are saying that, like, uh, your moral standards are obviously going to change with the time and things like that. And it's just an interesting kind of concept. I won't, like, spoil it or anything. You can see it for yourself. But as I say, it, it focuses mainly on, like, a subjectivist kind of viewpoint of morality which in my opinion is probably the best starting point because if we're gonna agree that morality is mostly for practical purposes anyway we can build off that by having like shared axioms rather than uh, you know cer certain other moral schemes to start off the con list uh, we're gonna be focusing on one of the things that I had less than a fun time dealing with when watching the series and that's the concept of the great spirit mostly because the very first message that you get from this spirit is one of your very like stereotypical bullshits of like ah I know everything but somehow you're still able to do things without my knowledge of them 
because I know everything, but I don't know what you're going to choose to do, even though if I knew everything, then I would, by definition, have to know the thing that you're going to choose. And it's bad. I don't, I don't like that uh, explanation because it's very inconsistent. It makes absolutely zero sense. Dumb. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's kind of the problem with the Great Spirit in general, is that it's an ass pool. It is that it is just a major, like, deus ex machina whenever you need it to advance the plot, which is super contrived, and you, you should just try to avoid that in storytelling. For the next one, I'd say it definitely lies in the art style. I would personally say that the art style has undergone a drastic amount of improvement in the 20 years that have gone by, and what I mean by that is that there's a lot more detail in the series this time around. A lot of the drawing perspectives uh, are not only better, but just flow a lot more easily. One of the big downgrades that I would say that did happen during this time, though, was the actual character designs themselves can sometimes be kind of wonky. Like that kid that hangs out with Manta in the very first episode, he he has the, the bigger guy. He has a very odd body shape this time around. It's very, like, One Piece-esque. And, I mean, I love One Piece, so it doesn't bother me at all, but if you're the type of person that doesn't like super, like, unrealistic and disproportionate bodies, that might bother you a little bit. So, for The Last Shaman King, one of the big complaints that you're gonna probably hear is that like ah 64 episodes wasn't enough to get 30 plus volumes of manga content into one series and this new series is attempting to do the exact same thing with only 52 episodes now as I said earlier in the video the pacing is way better this time around so I don't think that there's gonna be a huge problem fitting in what you need to in the story to make it a lot more comprehensive and just better and more filled out than it was the first time around. My complaint here is more the fact that you're still gonna lose a little bit of that extra stuff that you get in the manga, your your little side character developments, you know. Uh, again, not filler because it's canon, but the things that feel very much like filler. But those types of things have their place, right? Like if you like that character development, if you like having that extra backstory, if you like all of that little extra stuff, read the manga. <laughs> because <laughs> you're probably not getting it in the anime series this time around, which, again, whatever. I don't think the stuff that you're going to be missing out in the manga is really going to detract you that much from either the story or the actual action itself, so to each their own. But yeah, that's basically my take, guys. I think I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10, mainly because it, it it's still good. It's just that this new Shaman King isn't that much different from the old Shaman King. You're going to be getting a lot of the exact same stuff, only, like I say, better paced uh, and better looking. So I think that if you were a fan of the original Shaman King series, this is definitely going to be something that you want to check out. But if you weren't that much of a fan of the original Shaman King series, there's not going to be much for you here that's probably going to change your mind on that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my take today. If you enjoyed, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and follow the high.